How are you guys doing this evening? <clears throat> good, good. Some of you guys are willing to answer me out loud. It's nice. Uh, my name is Chad. I'm the missions pastor here at FBC. And I'm so happy to get to be with you guys tonight and, uh, and fill in for Jason. Uh, he was blessed to get to go to a Spurs game with his oldest son. And so he gets to hang out with Wimby. I get to hang out with you guys. It's way better. And uh, so lots, lots of good stuff going on. I, I just want to take a minute and say thank you for continuing to pray for all of our missionaries and our partners around the world. Uh, whenever I get a chance to be in front of you, I want to bring those things up. I haven't gotten to tell stories from our trip to Turkey uh, all the way back in November, but the trip went very, very well. And we're, we're well set up for our trips coming up this summer and the rest of this year. And, and the Lord has really provided uh, amazing partners for us um, all around the world. So there'll be more information on those things coming up soon. Um, one thing to pray is we have a small team, five of us going to Mexico this weekend. We leave on Friday, we come back on Monday. So if you think about James and Linda and, and uh, Stacy and, and Brian Austin and I, we'll be down there just for a few days uh, trying to encourage our partners there in the Yucatan and, uh, and prepping for our summer trips as well. So, you guys were here last week. We started a new series here on, on our Recharge Nights. It's, it's a simple uh, book that John Piper wrote. Has anybody read John Piper? Okay, so you know he's a simple guy, and, uh, and it's a lot of easy, easy to read things. This actually is one of his uh, simple books. He, he, it's, it's a large book, but it's 47 demands, kind of commands is another way, that Jesus makes. Uh, we start talking about what Jesus expects his people to do and to live by. And so last week, Jason started with Be Born Again. It's a really good starting point. And the one I'm going to talk about today is another really good starting point. It's the word repent. Are you guys familiar with that word? Have you heard it before? If you've been around Christianity for very long, and if you've been a believer for more than 50 years, repentance was a really big word a few years back, right? You might think about those hellfire and damnation preachers, repent, right? Hey, oh, we got like men. These guys are ready to go. Okay, well, listen. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm not going to go down that road. <clears throat> This is a huge, huge word, and, and I love it because it takes us to the root and sometimes the very first things that Jesus said. Before he called any disciples, Matthew tells us, he says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And what an incredible, very simple encapsulation of the gospel, right? This, this is what the gospel is. It's this idea that God has, has, has drawn near to you. He's drawn near to me. And if we will find him and turn from our wicked ways, then he will draw near to us and save us and, and be, be, he'll call us his children. The benefits just go on and on and on, the blessings that we receive. But that word repent is an important word. You know, there's a lot of different ways to describe it. I've heard it said most that it's a turn away from your sin, right? It's a, the exact 180 degree turn. <clears throat> John Piper went into a lot of different explanations of the Greek and how this works. But one of the things I thought was really interesting is it, it, it talked about this idea that it's to change purpose or to redirect uh, your, your perception on the world and life. And, and you think about how all those things come together. The idea that you would turn away from your sin. The idea that you would redirect the purpose for which you live. The idea that you would, you would seek a new perception on how you see the world and how the world sees you. And you think about this, really this redefinition of who we are, right? And so when we repent, it's not just a vocal um, saying you're sorry. It's more than that. Right? Have you guys had kids before? There's some of you guys that haven't had kids, but your mom is right there. <clears throat> if your mom says, I want you to go clean your room, right, and you don't do it, how's that going to go? Did you guys ever clean your room? Yeah. They do. They're so good. My daughters are also really good at cleaning their rooms. And uh, typically we have to tell them multiple times. And then we find out sometimes they're going to stuff everything under the bed. Have you guys, your kids ever done this? So you walk into the room and it looks clean. And then you start to look, wait, wait a second. There's something. And you look and you're like, oh my goodness, this is what they did. They stuffed it all into places you can't see. So at least sometimes <laughs> she goes and takes it all out under the bed. She'll open the drawers and be like, oh, pull it in a stack in the middle of the room and say, until this is cleaned up the way we would clean it up, it's not clean. You right, you done that? So there's a story in, the, in Luke <clears throat> chapter five where it it's a story of these two sons. 
And uh, one of them, you know, is the prodigal son, right? And he goes and he lives very wildly and, and wastes and squanders all the, that his father gives him. And there's a beautiful picture of what repentance looks like. When he comes back, he's reached the bottom of all things. And he comes back and he, he says to his father uh, in Luke 15, 21, um, the verse is, is going to pop up here in a, in a second. And it, it says, uh, I have it here too, if it doesn't pop up. Uh, we've had a few, there we go. And it said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be your son. You guys have heard that story, right? Well, everyone understands the repentance that we see in the prodigal, but do you know that there's another son? And the end of the story is that son is standing outside, upset with his father because of the grace that he showed to the prodigal, to the younger son. And that son doesn't repent. This story is about two sons. And, and what's interesting is I think a lot of people identify with the prodigal because his sin is so obvious. But most, I think, American Christians, we probably identify more with the older brother where we've done everything right. But at the end of the story, who's outside the father's presence? <laughs> It's that older son. And here's one of the things, uh, uh, one of my professors in college used to say this. He said, the innocent love justice and the guilty love mercy. You guys have heard this before? The problem is when the guilty think they're innocent and they expect mercy when they deserve justice. And that's kind of the truth for all of us is, is we were one time far from God, deserving of his wrath right? Far from his, his love and hope and all the good things, all the blessings that we receive when we come to Christ. And then we turned to him. And when we did, we turned away from who we were before. We repented. And then this story, that prodigal son story, we find one son repents and the other does not. And it leaves the question, where are you? Which son are you? Are you the one that repents and comes to the father, even if your sin is so obvious and wicked? Or are you the son that thinks you have it all together and ends up outside the love of the father? So it's a beautiful picture of repentance. Uh, John Piper also brought up that the word repent brings this idea of urgency. There's a reason why, why the command of Jesus is repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, because there's a day when the kingdom will not be at hand. There's a day coming where, where that begins to move away from us. And so we have a time in which we have this opportunity to, to share the gospel with those around us. In fact, it comes kind of our last point. We told our repentance is it's for all people in all times. Uh, if you look with me at this last verse, Luke 24, 46 through 47, this is uh, Jesus speaking. He said, it's written that Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead on the third day. And he would proclaim, here we go, that repentance for forgiveness of sin would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations. You see, this idea of repentance is not just for us or for our family or for our people. It's for all the peoples of the earth. It has been from the beginning. Matthew 24, 14 says, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. And so guys, here's the thing. This gospel, this, this call to draw near to God, to repent of your sin, to be close to him, it's not just for us. It's so that as we draw near to him, through us, he draws near to others. And they get access. And so it's a hard word. People are scared of using the word repent today because they think it, you know, brings up things like judgment. They might say, who do you think you are? But if we're honest with ourselves, we all know that we're far from perfect. We're far from the holiness that a holy God demands. And we need a savior. We need someone who can take all of that weight, all of that sin, all of the mess and take it on himself and instead give us this beautiful gift of grace and so tonight, as we just kind of think through this idea, I want to ask you, who are the people in your life that God has given you access to? Who are the people that you have opportunity to love and care and show them the kingdom of God has drawn near to them? Because it's very likely that you are the vehicle. <laughs> you're, the, you're, you're the potter, the pottery that carries this, this kingdom with you. You're the voice, you're, you're the ambassador of hope and love and life. And so as you take this beautiful picture of repentance and what it means to you, how do you carry it to others around you? 
the scope of God's heart has never been just for us. It's always been for us and through us to everyone, right? He calls a people, his people, to reach all the peoples. And so I ask you today, who are the people that God is calling you to speak out to? The second piece, really simply, is to seek your own, look at, look at your own heart. And measure where are the areas that you've hidden from the Lord? What are the things that you've held back and say, you can have everything, God, but this. What are you struggling with? And what are the areas that you still maybe need to say, Lord, take this and help me to turn away from it. Help me to seek a new perspective on the way that you're moving. Help me to move my purpose more in line with your purpose. You guys know I've been talking about this perspectives class forever. (laughs) You guys are like, if I hear perspectives one more time, I'm going to throw that book at him. It's a big book as well. But the goal of that class is really just that simple thing. We want to help people see that God has been at work. He's been at work since the beginning of human history, drawing people from all nations to himself. And it's a work that he promises to fulfill. He says to Abraham, I'll bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you and all the nations of the world, all the nations of the earth, all the families of the earth, some transit will be blessed through you. And that's fulfilled in so many different ways. But his scope from the beginning has been all peoples. So when Jesus came and he said, repent for the kingdom of God's at hand, it's not because it was a new thing. It was just a new way of saying it. And there was a new expression Jesus himself was standing among them. And now the expression is through you and I to take that same message. The kingdom of God has drawn near to those around us. Guys, that's our task. That's our mission. That's the core missionary task of the entire Christian church. And it's who we are. It's what we're made for. So I hope tonight as you think through that, think through how God is calling you to repent tonight. What are the things that you've withheld? And then who are the people that God is calling you to? Um, sounds like God has brought some rain. It's a good thing, right? Well, let me pray for you as we finish. Father God, we thank you so much for your word. And we pray, God, as we consider what that word repentance means, that, Father, we would humble ourselves, that, God, we would turn from our wicked ways, our sin, God, the things that, that separate us from you, and that, God, you would help us to see you clearly, and that we could draw near to you, because you indeed draw near to us. But God, we pray that you would burden our hearts for those around us, those who are still far from you, those whose eyes are darkened, Father, those who have not seen the truth and the light and the hope that comes in Christ. We pray, God, that you would draw their heart to repent as well, that they would seek you and find you. Father, we thank you so much for this rain tonight, and we pray that you would use this church and this community as a light on this hill to bless this community. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.